Hello, it is Wednesday, September 1st, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword daily solve. It's a Wednesday puzzle, the midweek puzzle. Midweek and roughly mid difficulty, I would say. Often a shade easier than mid difficulty, perhaps. Thursday, maybe a shad more difficult. A shad more difficult, I just said. Let's move on. Um, we had some clues from yesterday that I wanted to discuss. People seem to generally enjoy yesterday's puzzle, but some people found there to be uh, few too many Americanisms for them to be able to solve. One thing was that uh, some people suspected maybe the spelling of droll, D-R-O-L-L, was an Americanism, but I don't think that's true. I, I looked it up and droll is overwhelmingly spelled D-R-O-L-L, also acceptable is D-R-O-L-E, which would be the original French spelling, but the Oxford English Dictionary spells it with two L's, so I assume um, that is the standard spelling in English worldwide and not just in the United States. So some people may just have seen it more often the other way, which is entirely plausible. Uh, also, speaking of words borrowed from French, there was an interesting discussion of oeuf, which is French for egg, which came up in the in the puzzle yesterday. I mentioned that I've noticed that sometimes it's pronounced without the F at the end in French, and I didn't entirely know the rule there. And Lucas O.W. points out, as to the oeuf situation, in French, the F is only pronounced when the word is in its singular form. As a plural, the F falls away, and it sounds like the German O. So you could have luf, which is, as I described yesterday, where love comes from in tennis, and that would be the egg. But you could have lese, and that would be the eggs, plural, without the F on the end. So there we go. That was, a, that was very interesting and useful for me. And then the word demijohn came up. I hadn't heard this word. <laughs> Apparently, relatively few of you had as well. Churn looked it up and says, a carboy, also known as a demijohn, is a rigid container with a typical capacity of four to 60 liters. And Anu MD replies and says, I was excited to learn the word demijohn. I work in a pharmaceutical lab and I request carboys, there you go, full of various media three to one acetonitrile wa to water, for instance, for experiments on a daily basis. I look forward to teaching all my lab mates a new term for this. So there you go. Learning things related to your professional life from the crossword puzzle each day. So let's see if we can learn anything from this puzzle. I'm already seeing that there's an interesting puzzle formation behind this. So let's, let's get on with it. This is a Wednesday crossword constructed by Sean Yamada Hunter edited as always by Will Shorts. Are we ready to get started? Yes, let's say we are. Okay. Wow, fascinating. So we've got a huge if represented by these I and F glyphs painted in with the black squares in the puzzle. And that means this is a rare case of a New York Times crossword puzzle that has no symmetry. It is not vertically or horizontally symmetric. It is not radially symmetric. There is no symmetry going on here because the F breaks it. Although the um, vertical stroke of the F, if we didn't have the little arms coming off the F, without that, it would be radially symmetrical. But anyway, let's move on. So here we have one across fireproof with a question mark. So that question mark, as I'm sure you know by now, indicates that there's something punny going on. So perhaps what this means is not resistant to fire, but rather evidence of fire, proof of fire, maybe ash left after an arson or something. Midsection section informally. So I think this is your torso. I don't know. It could be abs or bod, maybe. I'm not sure which of those is, uh, let's see, four down. It, maybe this will help. Check the cross. Nevertheless, look at our current situation. Well, if this were B for bod, this could be B that as it may know. Too good to be true. I was hoping I could get a whole grid spanning answer in one go, but it was not to be. We'll have to come back to that. Boy, there are some long answers in this clue. Look in this puzzle. Look at this. Four down, six down, eleven down. Just those. Nothing, nothing grid spanning on the acrosses. 
a bad break. Oh, this could this could be a number of different ways of interpreting break. So let's let's move on. Pop singer known for performing in a face obscuring wig. I don't know. I'm sure this is very obvious to many people watching. I apologize. Japan's largest beer brand. Well, wouldn't be surprising if this is one of the brands that exports overseas, which would help it be the largest brand. So maybe it's Asahi, which certainly come across in Japanese restaurants. To nurse as a beer. Oh, that's a nice, nice parallel there with beers. Could be sip at or sip on, maybe. Just ch ch looking at a, over here, Carmichael, who composed Heart and Soul. Could that be Hoagie Carmichael, I think? And then here, so that would be Sip On. And then we have Body Feature for roughly 90% of people. So this is something that 10% of people don't have. 10% is still a pretty high percentage. So it would still be something relatively commonplace. It might be any when you have a, a belly button that is um, does, that does not protrude, uh, which and the ten, so I guess ninety percent of people would have that, and ten percent the Audi, perhaps. I'm just guessing here, but it seems plausible. Lookout signal in brief. Could this be an APB, an all points bulletin, which police officers would or police headquarters, I suppose, or something would issue to say there's someone on the loose, all points, we're issuing a bulletin. Not sure. Oh yeah, probably is, because this says they can rate up to 350,000 on the Scoville scale. If you're not familiar with the Scoville scale, that is a uh, relative measurement of heat uh, generated by chili peppers. So this will, looks like habanero peppers to me. There you go, and that fits. So we've got our first grid spanning down clue. Excellent. Should help us with some crosses. Here we have a young newt. I think that's an eft, I believe is what those are called. Oh, nevertheless, look at our current situation. It sure looks like it starts with and yet, doesn't it? And yet here we are? Maybe. Maybe it's and yet here we are. That would be exciting. Let's check some crosses. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Anybody home? Okay, but it's not in quotation marks, so it's not somebody saying anybody home. Any. So is it a home for anybody? Earth? In other words, anybody, any person, would the home that any of them would share would be Earth, perhaps. Very cleverly clued. I hope that's right, because um, because that's very clever. Dark purple fruit. Ah, <laughs> could this be our old friend, the acai berry? A little bit of crossword ease. Channel owned by Disney. Here we have put numbers on the board. Ah, if you put numbers on the board, you score. And then, uh, in other words, in a game, in a game, a, you know, sports match or really any kind of game, I suppose, that has a score. Here we have certain recyclable, which certainly looks like not papar, but paper. Channel owned by Disney must be ESPN. Oh boy, someone told me what this was recently after it came up. Entertainment Sports Programming Network or something like that. Rose Granger Weasley to Harry Potter. Uh, well, having never read nor seen Harry Potter, I wouldn't know this, but it sure looks like niece, doesn't it? So this, ah, priceless keepsakes. Another very clever uh, clue here. This looks like gift receipts. A gift receipt for those, I, I don't know if this is sort of a culturally specific thing or not. Um, I assume this concept must exist elsewhere, but I don't know if the name is universal. This is when you buy someone a gift and you want to preserve the option uh, for them to be able to return the gift in case they don't like it, but you don't want them to know how much you spent. Uh, and so you can order a receipt with no price printed on it that will still allow them to return the gift if desired. A gift receipt. So here we have easy blank, easy as pie, 
and uh, we have like the majority of Iraqis and Bahrainis. Could this be Shia, Shia Muslims, I assume? And then here we have open blank, a plan to pay later. Oh, I see. Sorry. I think I, I, think I said a plan to play, play, pay later, which would have thrown you off and threw me off for a few seconds as well. It's not a plan. It is verb, plan, to plan, to pay later, to open a tab. Actress Angela of How Stella got her groove back. Certainly looks like Angela Bassett, doesn't it? Here we have a budget carrier from 1993 to 2014. So this is pretty obscure, I think. But as I said before, usually when you see carrier, not uh, maybe usually is putting it too strongly, I would say carrier more often than any other uh, case refers to an air carrier, an airline. So that's uh, that's what you should look for when that when you see that, and it may not be the case, but that's usually my first port of call. All right, a pull up muscle for short. I guess that would be your your lats. I don't remember what that stands for, but something kind of in your shoulder back area. I'm not incredibly well educated about these things, but that seems correct to me. Here we have a 1948 Western starring Bob Hope as Painless Potter. The Palomino? I don't know this film, but I, I'm guessing that because Palomino is a kind of horse and a Western deals with people riding horses often. So I am using a bit of deductive reasoning, I guess, to winnow this down to maybe the Palomino because of our crosses, the pal. You'll have to do that pretty often on the crosswords is try to infer things that require culturally specific knowledge um, based on what you have and what the clue gives you to, uh, to go on. So it just occurred to me, I don't yet know what this if is about. Huh, I hope I haven't missed something. Habanero peppers. And yet here we are. Is what is going on? I wonder if we'll see some theme, some explicit theme clues at some point. So here we have party invite initials. Not sure yet. Here we have grassroots group focused on addressing climate change. Well, Extinction Rebellion is the first thing that comes to mind because they've been demonstrating again here in London recently, but that doesn't fit. So what is this? I'm not sure what this is. Hopefully I'll recognize it with some crosses. This, by the way, looks like AirTran. I'm pretty sure that must be AirTran. Air Transport or something like that. The budget carrier from 1993 to 2014. Here we have exclamation upon seeing this puzzle. <laughs> All right, so we've got, we've got something that's looking at the theme. It's gotta be, that's a big if. Maybe this isn't Palomino. Would that fit? Uh-oh, maybe all my, I had that whole thing about inferring things and this is probably totally wrong. I mean, let's see, letter after pi, uh, row maybe, R-H-O. McKellen who played Gandalf, Ian McKellen. I saw Ian McKellen play Hamlet just last week. It was really interesting. Just sort of completely uh, casting was was had no uh, bearing gender, age, uh, race. There was no um, demographic requirements for casting. So Ian, a very very old actor at this point, playing Hamlet, a sort of quintessentially young character, and there were uh, women playing different male characters and all sorts of different things. It was really good production. It was really excellent. Anyway, uh, health class subject. Um, STD maybe, sexually transmitted, sexually transmitted disease could be topic in health class. This in Spanish could be ESO or ESA, I think, depending on the gender. Wowza. 
Not sure yet. UK honor could be an OBE or an MBE. It could be a number of things. Order of the British Empire, commander of the British Empire, member of the British Empire, KBE, I think, maybe as well. So we don't know what that is yet. Word on either side of ah. And here we have ah with that accent, which suggests this might be something in French. Hopefully this is obvious with one additional cross. Probably should already be getting it, but I'm not. Main ingredient in the Japanese dish, tamagoyaki. Egg, probably, with that G there. One time Russian space station uh, would be mir for peace. That's what mir means in Russian. All right, so grassroots group focusing on addressing climate change. Uh, this looks like movement, probably, right? Oh, the pale, so the Western, boy, I was really off with that Palomino after that whole spiel. Good Lord, what a, what a waste that was. The pale fire? Sorry for those of you who know this and were already E yelling at me earlier at the Palomino. Apologies. It's a good guess, I get, but obviously completely wrong, so, oh well. Soft murmur, maybe a hum? Uh, here we have come now it'll be okay don't worry don't fret something like that party invite initials could be byo for bring your own as in bring your own beer sort of odd for them to be hived off like that away from the target to be brought that would make midsection section abs, though, which is pretty plausible. That was one of the early guesses. And then what would this be? School whose campus contains Washington Square Park. Well, Washington Square, I happen to know, is in New York. So NYU, New York University, seems plausible here. And then what is, oh, the Sunrise Movement. Yes, that is familiar. So the letter after pi is indeed rho, I think. And here we have difficult to understand. Not on something, let's see, what is this? Wowza, could be man, an exclamation. Wow, man, wow, that kind of thing. Oh God, oh man, oh wow. Uh, word on either side of ah, uh, v a v? Life to life, that doesn't, I'm not sure. That might be something, but I don't recognize it. All right, let's see. Me message often written in large letters. Ah, I think this is something that came up recently, SOS, which, um, if it is SOS, uh, an acronym that doesn't actually stand for anything, just a an easy-to-tap-out Morse code um, sequence that has been backronymed, as a, as a commenter pointed out recently, to save our ship or save our souls, that sort of thing, but actually doesn't have any intended meaning. Uh, well, it does have a meaning, but it doesn't have a... The meaning is help us, but uh, it doesn't have... It's, a, it's an emergency call. It doesn't have a, um unwrapped phrase that it corresponds to. Anyway, soft murmur. I don't know. This might not be SOS. Most out there. Well, it could be... It's, okay, so when you see most, especially if you already have a cross that fits in the last three letters, often you can put in EST because... The most means it's a superlative, the most of something, the biggest, the hottest, you know, something with EST at the end often works, works out for you there. So the most out there could be the odd, well, not the oddest, but that it could be something that means that is what I mean, I suppose. All right. Um, weed could be pot. So in this case, weed, marijuana, the drug. Oh, a soft murmur, murmur could be a coup. Oh, the pale face is the... Boy, I, I, <laughs> I went through every possible thing this could be uh, and never arrived at the pale face. I guess that's sort of a epithet for white people, I suppose, in the context of a Western, I guess is what that's getting at. Difficult to understand. Okay, well, grasp can mean to understand. So what is the rest of this? 
Why am I not seeing it? Sorry, I'll have to come back to that. Um, all right, I think we sort of gave up on our across clues. So let's get back to marching through the crossword. Core, um, I mean, this could be a number of things. It could be a physical core, could be your sort of core in your, your body, could be uh, the most important part, element of something, the core of an idea, that sort of thing. Come now, it'll be okay, right? Don't something. Wallet items could be IDs, identification cards. I'm game. So the first thing I thought when I saw I'm game would be I'm in. But immediately you can rule that out because you wouldn't repeat anything. You wouldn't repeat any word from an answer, from a clue in the answer. So you, because this already has I'm game, you wouldn't say I'm in. So instead it could be let's. Yeah, I'm in. Let's. Let's do it. Online health page for short. Well, we have that for short, so it'll be something contracted or abbreviated in some way. So it could be an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions page. Month during which the NBA All-Star Game is usually played. Well, I certainly wouldn't know this, but now that we have an F, it must be February, right? There aren't any other F months, I don't think. Farm cry. So farm cry could be a bleat, sheep, bleat, ba ba ba, bleating. Website with much custom-designed jewelry. Uh, it could be Etsy, a uh, online storefront intended for homemade goods. Shoot, question mark, in quotation marks. Could be bang, I suppose. Slip past. Um, could be elude or evade. Either of those would have a D here. Ah, so shoot, sorry, it's not, it's not shoot, related to a, a gun, it's shoot related, it's sort of a, a light exclamation of frustration, darn, shoot, that sort of thing. Blank, oh, maybe it's not though. No, it's not, it's another one of those, it's dang. <laughs> because here we have blank stardust alter ego of David Bowie, which is Ziggy Stardust, as in Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars, by David Bowie. All right, here we have Rows of Rock. This, this is a, um, comes up not infrequently in the crossword. This is Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses. And I assume this to be a useful bit of crossword fill because we've got this unusual situation that puts an X next to an L and it's sort of an odd collection of letters. So it's a good name at getting at a strange, strange arrangement that wouldn't come up ordinarily in English words. Oh, so the most out there, the zaniest, presumably. Here we have, my take is, I'd say, and here we have requirements. Norms, maybe? Good as new. All fixed, I see, all fixed. And here we have the nickname for the Miami Dolphins with the, so here's a case where I think my inference will steer me slightly better than it did with the pale face, not the Palomino. Um, they're dolphins, so they have fins. So the Miami Dolphins must be the fins, I would, I would infer. So here we have to slip past is to elude, and that looks especially correct because it puts a U after this Q. So I don't think we've looked at this clue yet. Uh, performer known as the King of Latin Pop. It must be Enrique Iglesias. And so here uh, we have requirements. Ah, not norms. I was thinking requirements, norms as in standards, but that was a bit, that wasn't very spot on. Um, requirements as needs makes much more sense. A direct synonym to require something is to need it. So here we have hunky dory. Not sure, that means all good, all fine, everything's great. And here we have comedian Wanda, Wanda Sykes. Frequent, she frequently pops up in Larry David's long running uh, comedy show, uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, which I very much love. Sign. Could be ink. So to sign your signature, to ink your signature. I, I'm not, I wouldn't be completely confident of that if not for these two crosses that don't offer a lot of options for this word. Hunky dory. What is this? Suffix with gator. We see that it's uh, capitalized. So we can infer it's a proper noun, in this case, a brand name. So Gatorade, the drink with 
the electrolytes that are apparently so important according to marketing. I don't know, maybe that's real. Ah, so Hunky Dory is dandy. And then here we have the S of iOS, which is the I operating system, whatever it is. It's funny that this might be a case like SOS where there isn't actually an official sort of unwrapping of this acronym because OS are obviously operating system in the, in the sense that Apple's own Mac OS is the Macintosh operating system. But for OS to mean operating system, that would mean the I has to mean something, uh, unless it's just the I operating system, the international operating system, perhaps. Dandy, hunky-dory dandy. Yep, great. All right, so let's, we have to close out this puzzle up here somehow. Here we have performed very well on, as in a test or an exam, you aced the exam, perhaps. Come now, it'll be okay. Oh, I see. So I, fret did come to mind. I think I said that out loud when I was looking at this before, but but it didn't have it. There weren't enough letters. So I suppose it's don't you fret. All right. Am I any farther here towards unpacking this? Difficult to understand. Oh, sorry. Beyond one's grasp. Sorry if you've been really wanting me to get that. And then here, of course, it's not, it's vis-a-vis. -vis. It's not, not vis-a-vis. -vis. Sorry. I, uh, it's, it's, very much adopted into English language. Yes, vis-a-vis. -vis. So you, you would use that to say, um, oh boy, what would be a good sentence for this? Sort of in relation to something else. So, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the, the convention of um, rotational symmetry and crosswords. This one is not, eh, it's not a very good example. Anyway, I'm going to move on. <laughs> Core... Oh, the essence. So it is core, as in the core of an idea, the essence of an idea, something like that uh, is what that is getting at. GI entertainers. This has come up maybe once or twice on the series before. This is a pretty uh, relatively common crossword fill. The USO, which puts on um, shows for uh, members of the American military stationed overseas, and I don't remember what USO stands for, but it comes up in crosswords occasionally. So it's a good one to know. The Spartans of the NCAA, that is uh, a university, presumably. And this Spartans would be their sports team. Um, but I'm not sure what, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure what the rest of that is. <laughs> Letters on the three button. Oh, I see. Three on a um, touch tone phone pad. So D-E-F, because one, I think, doesn't have any letters, and then two would be A-B-C, so three is D-E-F, I think is what that is. And a bad break. Oh, um, did I get something wrong here? Oh, a, I see a bum deal. I was looking at bad deal, but of course it can't have bad in it. As I said in early on in this very puzzle, you could never repeat a word from a clue in an answer. So this is a bum deal. And the Spartans of the NCAA is MSU, something State University, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri. I don't know. I apologize for any Spartans out there. So there we go. There's the Wednesday puzzle. I spent the entire puzzle sort of wondering <laughs> where the theme was going to come in. And I think the whole thing is this big if with the exclamation, <laughs> that's a big if. So I think actually quite brilliantly, there was a level of uh, sort of, there was a kind of level of hypothetical action, a sort of potential energy uh, that, that pervaded this whole solve for me. And I think that's very well summed up by a huge if itself, the, a word that is synonymous with the hypothetical. Uh, so yeah, there's something, there was something poetic about the way this theme um, put me into a state of constantly wondering what the theme was going to be. And at the end, it turns out, yes, it's staring you in the face the whole time. It's a big if, and that's apparently all there is to it. Although it's entirely possible I'm missing 
just trying to look through the puzzle. I mean, here's a backwards if fi coming off of the f, but I think that might just be a coincidence. I don't see, I mean, here's an if in gift receipts. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think there's anything to that. There's a diagonal if, I mean, I'm really clutching at straws here, desperately trying to see more in this theme than there is there. I kind of like it as this, as this uh, thing that hangs over the puzzle and then ultimately just hits you on the head in this huge way. And that's all, and that's it. So very clever. And if, if there's something that like this big, if is absolutely staring me in the face that I'm missing, please let me know in the comments because I'm, I'm always happy to be happy to be proven wrong or to have my, uh, my assumptions expanded with greater knowledge. So do let me know. But it appears that it is just a big if, <laughs> which is great. Very clever. I like it a lot. Well done, Sean Yamada Hunter. And um, I suppose that's it for the Wednesday puzzle. Let me know how you fared with this one. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel? And you will see these uh, solves as they go up each morning. And uh, maybe a friend would like it. If, if you think a friend would like it, why not pass it on to them? They may well. What if they do? Then you will have done them quite a great service. And if not, they've only spent, what, 20, 30 minutes of their time, and they can move on to something else. Anyway, if you... I have to stop doing this. <laughs> it's, uh, but I can't, I can't not say if, because it's what I always say in these bits, and it's, it's uh, distracting me. Um, let's see if I can avoid saying that word for the rest of this video. Consider whether you would like to be invested in the long-term sustainability of this series. Were that to be the case, consider donating me a couple of quid or a few bucks to my coffee donation page, which is linked in the description field underneath each video. And thank you so much to everybody who has done so, particularly those of you who have chosen to support this channel using the um, monthly recurring donation feature that Coffee offers. As I've said, I'm considering um, ways to make that a more attractive option, maybe with some kind of reward or, or I, I don't know what it would be. I have to think about it. But if you have any ideas, oh, mm, ah. for those of you who have any ideas, please drop them in the comments or, or get them to me any other way on Twitter or whatever else. And finally, I do hope to see you again tomorrow for the Thursday solve. But until then, have an excellent rest of your Wednesday. Take care.